Thank you for considering Wilson Art HD Sinks. The following video provides a quick overview of our three installation methods. The box label identifies the sink design and color. Inspect your Wilson Art sink prior to beginning the fabrication process. Most Wilson Art HD sinks are marked for center faucet placement to help in the installation of plumbing fixtures. Also, a slight indentation is located in the front wall of every HD vanity to indicate the overflow location. Check for flatness of the sink flange on a flat work surface. Mark the sink location on the substrate with a set of vertical and horizontal lines. A two-part template is necessary to remove the substrate for your sink flange in the postform countertop. Instructions to make a two-part template or information to purchase phenolic templates are located in the fabrication guide. Align the crosshairs of the two-part template with the reference lines on the substrate and screw the template down. For this next step, you will need a two and a half or three and a quarter horsepower plunge router and a one and an eighth by one inch top bearing flush trim bit to remove the substrate. Routing of substrate may be done in several passes. On the final pass, set the cutting depth to route within 1 32nd of the laminate. Adjust your depth to include the thickness of the template and the countertop substrate. Variations in adhesive and substrate thickness may cause damage to the laminate if routing depth is set too deep. Route along templates in the direction indicated and remove the template when routing is completed. Using a scraper or sharp chisel, remove the remaining substrate and adhesive layer from the back of the laminate. Keep the chisel flat, bevel side up, to avoid damaging the laminate. Using a wire brush, remove any remaining substrate or adhesive residue from the exposed laminate. Blow off all residue with compressed air. Do not use adhesive solvents which may saturate the substrate or compromise the adhesive bond. Drill a half inch or larger pilot hole through the substrate at the inside of the sink cutout. This is your starting point for removing the centerpiece. Flip your top over and use a laminate trim router with a 3 8 bottom bearing flush trim bit. Route with the bearing against the inside of the sink cutout. This step will remove the center section of the cutout. Flip your top back over so the laminate is facing down. Dry fit the sink in the cutout. Ensure there is an eighth inch gap or less between the sink flange and the substrate. Also check to make sure the flange is flush with the substrate. If not, use a surface leveler or router to remove the excess. If the flange height is higher or lower than the substrate, it will contribute to telegraphing on the face side of the laminate. Clean the exposed laminate and sink flange with denatured alcohol with a clean white cloth. Be sure to remove ink printing from the back side of the laminate at bonding locations. Prep the 8230 sink seam adhesive. Slowly purge the cartridge and mixing tip to ensure proper mixing of the adhesive. You can run a small test bead on a scrap piece of laminate 
to let you know when the adhesive is dried. Apply a single 3 16th inch bead of adhesive along the inside edge of the sink flange. Place the sink in the cutout and wiggle the sink to distribute the adhesive. Align sink with register marks on the flange and reference lines on the substrate. Apply firm pressure for about 10 seconds. No weights are necessary. Allow the seam kit to cure completely before moving or routing. Fill the gap with 100% silicone. Place 3 quarter inch thick wood support strips around the perimeter of the sink flange. Minimum 2 inch wide strips are required. Strips should cover only the area of the flange that was previously trimmed. A half inch overhang is best. Secure your supports with wood glue and properly sized screws and nails. There are three basic ways to route and profile the laminate. Wilson Art HD sink router bits, a laminate tilt base router with a bottom bearing bit, and the Betterly acrylic sink trim router. You may refer to the fabrication guide for more detailed use of the tools specific for each installation method. In this video, we will use the Wilson Art HD sink router bits. To easily set the height of the router bits so they do not come in contact with the faucet deck, place a laminate chip or scrap laminate on the faucet deck and allow the bearing to rest on the sample. Tighten your router base and you're ready to go. Using a variable speed router between 16,000 and 18,000 RPM will prolong the life of the carbide router bits. Profile the laminate using the Wilson Art HD bevel profile bit with a laminate trim router. This will provide a close cut to the bevel of the sink and in some cases, slightly cutting into the sink itself. Together, these two bits will minimize tool wear and sanding in the next step. When finishing the bevel edge, use a random orbital palm sander starting with 150 grit and finish with 220 grit sandpaper. Finish out the sanded bevel using a gray 3M Scotch-Brite pad. Each sink design includes a reference point for drilling faucet holes. We recommend using a hole saw. Sand the sharp edges with 150 to 220 grit sandpaper. This concludes the post form fabrication method.